Shalom, everyone. Giving all praises to the Most High, Elohim, and His Word and His Truth. First of all, I want to just thank everybody who has checked out uh, the Black Panther movie that I had exposed. Okay, just want to thank y'all. This is part two. This is going to be a short version. However, I will be bringing out uh, maybe other things that I didn't speak on in this video here, but I will be showing 10 things, okay? 10 things in this movie that many people did not see or did not get. I'm getting straight to the point, okay? Many people ask for a short version, so this is a short version. I'll be showing 10 things to prove to the new viewers and those that are just clicking on this video and just watching this video for the first time, okay? Proving that those whom they call African Americans or blacks, okay, or Negroes, they are the real biblical people. They are the real chosen people of the Most High God. They are the real Hebrew Israelites or AKA Jews, okay, of the scriptures, okay? So before I do that, I just want to bring out these other films real quick for the new viewers so they can understand and see what's going on here when I bring out these 10 things in this Black Panther movie, okay? So without further ado, let's get it. You're not even American. You're not even African 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 American. Besides, to them, you're not even American. You're not even African American. You're... You are of the evil tribe, Bennett. You are of the evil tribe, Bennett. You are of the evil tribe, the evil tribe, evil tribe, evil tribe. This young man is the Ibu tribal leader. Do you understand what that means? Ibu tribe, Ibu tribe. This young man is the Ibu tribal leader. Do you understand what that means? He was the tribal king. That makes him the heir to the Ibu nation. That makes him the heir to the Ibu nation. To the Ibu nation. They are the wandering Jews of Africa. They are the wandering Jews of Africa. Into the Babylonian captivity of slavery. Tribes of Israel were black. The lost tribes of Israel were black. Hear me, O oh Israel, O oh Israel, this time forward and for all time. So are you free? Free? I don't like the color. I don't think much of Hebrews either. I don't like the color. I don't think much of Hebrews either. You know, I thought Jews were supposed to be smart. But you sound just like the Negro. You know, I thought Jews were supposed to be smart. But you sound just like the Negro. <laughs> We are still God's chosen. You're the chosen one. We are still God's chosen. You're the chosen one. The rising tide of disobedience, of outright defiance among the servant apes in our cities. Mr. Governor, on investigation, many of the reported offenses have been proved minor. That equal was killed while trying to escape from the city last night. That equal was killed while trying to escape from the city last night. That equals killed while trying to escape from the city last night. That equals, that equals, that equals, that equals, that equals, that equals. 
Wise Lord of the Sacred Word, we seek your counsel. I can recite the true names of the stars. I know. And I contain all the wisdom in the universe. Black Jew, I can't read, I'm half drunk. I'm a black Jew, I'm a black Jew. And he accepts me. I'm Jewish. I'm Jewish. I'm Jewish. I'm Jewish. Do you, do you know that the black man in America is Israel? That he's Jews? Do you know that? Yes. You, yes. You know that the black man in America is Israel? That he's Jews? Do you know that? Yes. You, yes. You, yes. You, so now, you see that Hollywood, they know, they understand that the so called Negroes what you call blacks are the biblical Israel. They understand that it is not a secret. We just don't know. So now let me show you 10 things in this film, as I said, that's going to confirm they know we are the biblical people. So let's start with number one, which is the Hebrew symbols in his mouth. If you didn't notice that. Son of Azuri. So as we see right here, right off the back in the beginning of this film, they're showing him opening up his mouth, pulling down his lip, and they're showing you the Hebrew symbols in his mouth. Okay, why are they doing that? Why are they showing that? Why do they have Hebrew symbols in his mouth? Okay, if he's a so-called quote-unquote African or African-American. Why is Hollywood doing this? Because again, they know that the so-called black people are the real biblical people. They are the real Hebrew Israelites, okay? That symbol in his mouth, that first symbol is cha, okay, means alive or living, okay, and I have that on my sifa, okay, as I said in, in the first breakdown of this movie, okay, and he has two menorahs in his mouth, as you can see clearly, okay, again, why are they putting these things in his mouth, there's something that they know that we don't know, but let's get it in the scriptures because it's all symbolic. It's all mockery. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 14. But the word is very nigh unto thee, unto you, in your mouth, in your mouth, okay? This word is alive. These scriptures are alive because we are fulfilling these biblical prophecies. And in your heart that thou mayest do it. Okay, let's get another script. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Your mouth. They know this word is alive. They know this word belongs in our mouth. That's why they're putting the symbols in his mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then... Thou shalt have good success. And that's only how we're going to come out of our situations we in. Okay? It's by studying and coming back to who we are. Okay? So this word, this is alive. Okay? It's alive. This word, these biblical prophecies, we are fulfilling. And that's why they're showing that right here to confirm to you and to us that we are the Hebrew Israelites and they know this thing and you can't escape it. This is what they showing you. And if this was not true and if we were not these people, why do that? What is the point, right? This movie has nothing to do with uh, <laughs> Jewish people, okay, or biblical people, right? It's Black Panther, right? So why are they doing that then? Because they understand and they know our history as the true people. So this is one point. One point. This is the first point I'm showing right here in this film. Okay? Good morning. 
How can I help you? Okay, point number two. If you didn't notice when you watched this film, as we see here, Killmonger, he has on quote unquote Jewish tassels. Okay, he has on Jewish tassels right here in this scene. Again, why? Why are they doing that? Why are they showing this quote unquote black man, African American, with Jewish tassels on? What is the significance of doing that? Of showing that? Okay? It's always a subliminal message. Once again, they know we are the biblical Israel. That's why <laughs> they are doing that. They are showing that in all these films, okay? As we see here, these tassels, all right? What is he doing with them on? Why? Okay? But <laughs> they're not telling you in your churches who you are, but yet they're showing these things in these films here. Okay, this is not for no reason, but let's get into a scripture. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Okay, speak unto the children of Israel, the Israelites, the biblical people, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Okay, now this tassel is the Jewish version, but it's a symbolic message. Okay, the, the Israelites were commanded to wear fringes and have on the fringe a, a ribbon or a border of blue on it. Okay, this is going to tie into something else I'm, I'm about to show. Okay, but they're showing him wearing these tassels because they know he is of Hebraic origin. Okay, this is his origin. They know who we are. We are not African Americans. Our history didn't start with slavery. Okay. And these people understand that quite well. Okay? All these things are related to the scriptures. And they're related to us because this book is about us. As I showed in the uh, the breakdown that I did of this movie that you can check out. Y'all can always go to and watch that. If you didn't watch it, I exposed the entire film. So this is just breaking down 10 things. Okay? So we got the... So far we got the Hebrew symbols in his mouth. And now we have the... Quote unquote Jewish tassels. Where is this one from? The Bobo Ashanti tribe, present day Ghana, 19th century. For real? And what about this one? So now, in this third section, okay, here with Killmonger, still has, he has on the uh, Jewish tassels, like I showed y'all, denoting that he is. A Hebrew Israelite, he is the real biblical Jew. Here she says, in reply to his question about this artifact, she says it's from the Bobo Ashanti tribe, okay, in present day Ghana. Okay, now this is going to confirm that the people in, in what they call uh, Africa are the real Hebrew Israelites. And if you want further information on this, you can go look at my breakdown of this whole movie. I bring out college text and everything to confirm this here. Okay, you can check that whole breakdown out. Okay, this is just a short version. Okay, but I want to go into some scriptures on this Ashanti okay, kingdom, which is in the scriptures that I didn't bring out uh, in the other film. Okay, so let's go here. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 32 and 33. And their villages were Itam and Ain, Raman and Tochin and Ashan. Ashan. Okay. Five cities and all their villages that were round about the same cities unto Baal. These were their habitations and their genealogy. Okay, let's go here. Joshua chapter 15. We're going to start at verse 20. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Judah according to their families. We jump down to verse 42 and 44. Okay, Ribna and Ether and Ashan. Ashan. Now, the T is denoting the people of Ashan when you actually do your research. Okay, so this is where it's coming from. Okay, one of the villages of 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 Judah of the tribe of Judah okay Ashan 
Okay, this is where they, they, they get it from, okay? Because these people kept their customs, okay? So this part three we see here, we got the Hebrew symbols in their mouth. We got them showing the uh, the uh, the tassels, the Jewish tassels. And now they're showing you or they're telling you and mentioning this Ashanti kingdom, okay? This is a West African kingdom, okay? As I explained in the, in the breakdown that the Hebrew Israelites fled from Jerusalem when they were being chased out by the Romans down into the West Coast of Africa, right? I brought all that information out. So again, if you want further information, you could just watch that whole breakdown. All right. The merchant tribe will not challenge today. Aye. The border tribe will not challenge. So now in this fourth section, we see here, we see uh, she says uh, the merchant tribe. OK, merchant this merchant tribe, tribe is referring to the. The Arabs, okay, the Arabs, all right? And if you want further information on Esau, check out my Esau lessons. The seed of Esau are the or one of the Arab tribes, okay? And they had the same language and the same customs as Jacob, okay? So Esau is not the white man for those uh, camps that like to push these dummy doctrines. I'm clarifying it again, okay? But then we see here... Okay, with uh, with Kabi, okay, his general, the guy next to him, they all wearing blue. He said the border tribe, the border tribe, which connects back to Numbers chapter fifteen, verse thirty eight. When I read about the children of Israel wearing those fringes, okay, and the Most I said to put upon the fringe of. Uh, of the borders of the borders a ribbon of blue and that's why they're wearing the blue here okay and they're calling themselves the border tribe the border tribe you see that again this is mockery they know our law they know we are the hebrew israelites okay this is this is this is the fourth thing i'm bringing out here and it's all connected Connecting back to him, uh, to uh, Killmonger wearing those those tassels. Okay, we're supposed to be wearing fringes, and we're supposed to have on the fringe a, a, a ribbon or border of blue. Okay, and this is why they're being called the Border Tribe, and they're dressed border in tribe. blue. Again, connecting to the movie Get Out. The same actor, Wakabi, his general. Okay, in that film Get Out, he had. The border of blue around his brown boots. He had blue laces going around his brown boots, okay? Indicating, again, this border of blue, okay? Also connected to the movie The Golden Child with Eddie Murphy when he had the blue bandana around his head. Again, that border of blue, border of blue. Also, the movie dark tower we had the border of blue around his waist okay again that border of blue that border tribe it's all mockery we all being we being mocked out here okay again connecting to another border movie tribe. planet border of tribe. the apes war for the planet of the apes you can check that out that whole movie out on my page i broke that whole thing down okay the only ape in that film who was who had these quote-unquote american uh who was speaking english and he had uh he was dressed like a freaking quote unquote Negro. Okay, he had on the blue, the blue. Again, this constant mockery of us. Also, another film, the movie with Jamie Foxx, Django, Django. He had on, again, the royal blue, that royalty. Okay, okay, again, that border of blue that we are supposed to wear. They're showing us in all these films you see here. Another movie. Roman J. Israel with Denzel Washington. All these black actors playing these roles here. We see he pulled out the blue handkerchief indicating once again that border of blue. Okay. Also in the movie with Will Smith. Bright, bright. The arcs, they were blue. They were blue. They were blue. Just like the movie Avatar. What color were they? 
they were blue. They were blue, okay? Also in the movie Proud Mary, okay? The little boy she was looking after, she said that blue is classic, okay? That blue is classic. Also, last movie, New Jack City, okay? Wesley Snipes. He came out with the blue. He started with the blue and he had it in the other scene. That border of blue. So we see here this fourth section connected with, with the scriptures in all these movies. They know our law. They know we are the real Hebrew Israelites. Okay, so we got the symbols in his mouth. We got the, the tassels. Okay, we got the... West African tribes, okay, they know that these people were the Hebrews, and now they have us wearing this border of blue. It's all in our law. So, <laughs> there you go. What is this? Again, here's another scene, okay, you see Wakabi and his men, they're wearing some dope fly Garments, okay. This is all a part of section four, okay. These garments that they have on, all right. They're fly, they're dope garments, like I showed in the in the entire breakdown that I did of this movie, okay. I showed in the books, the uh, illustrated books of um, King David, okay, and Moses wearing those fly garments, okay. Those dope garments, okay. That's what we wore. We wasn't butt naked, okay. <laughs> We had our garments, and that's why they're showing it in this film. But let's get a scripture real quick. Isaiah 52, verse 1. Awake, awake. Put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments. And that's what you see right here, these beautiful garments. And that's why they're showing that, okay? Again, they understand, they know who we are, but it's all mockery making fun of us. Okay, because we don't even dress like this, but today we waking up and we are putting on these garments, okay? O Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean, okay? Put on your beautiful garments, and that's what we wore. Ukuba upinde wa kukumisa, da kukuma apa, kwezi is she speak English? When she wants to. Now, in this fifth section, okay, we're dealing with the language. Here in this section, we see uh, T'Challa, okay, having a conversation, all right, and they're speaking uh, in their Hebraic language, and then he says, does she speak English? And then she says, when she wants to, okay? Like I showed in the film Avatar, they taught us this English, okay? They taught us English, all right? Now, when we connect with the scriptures here, let's go to 2 Maccabees chapter uh, 15, verse 29. Then they made a great shout and a noise praising the Almighty in their own language, in their own language. You see, if the people of the book spoke English, why would they say they were praising the Most High in their own language? Right? It doesn't make sense. So clearly, the English writers understood that these people spoke in a Hebraic language. They were Hebrews. Okay? And we did not come here speaking English. English is not our language. Neither are these English European customs that we participate in, it has nothing to do with us. It's not our culture, but yet we're doing these things, okay? So this is an indication, okay, of who we are speaking our Hebraic language. They understand that, okay? Confirming that uh, the people of the book were not Europeans. They were not white people, okay? They had a Hebraic language, and they understand that. So this is just another indication, Okay, another indication for those <laughs> that want this wisdom and knowledge. Also, the father said he would bring these people upon us that will have a strange tongue. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse uh, 49. 
The Most High shall bring a nation against you from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. That's why he's saying, does she speak English? And we didn't understand them. And that's why they had to change our language, taking us away from our Hebraic culture. Okay? These people, language we would not understand. Okay, but let's get another script. Baruch chapter 4 verse 15 to confirm this. For he hath brought a nation upon them from far. These people were far, far. It wasn't down a block. A shameless nation and of a strange language. Okay, a tongue we would not understand. Who neither reverence old man nor pity child. And they do the same thing today. They don't reverence the old and they don't care about our children. They'll shoot you and your mama and your daughter, your whoever. Okay, so this is confirmation of the scriptures. All right. And these people, once again, based on their language. Okay, this English is a West Germanic language. Okay, this is not a Shemitic language. Okay, it's not a Hebraic language. Okay, these people are not the Edomites for you clowns out there that keep calling Europeans Edomites. Okay, Joshua chapter 15 verse 1. This then was the lot of the tribe of the children of Judah by their families, even to the border of Edom, the wilderness of Zin. Okay, Judah and, and Edom was right next to each other. They spoke the same language. Okay, they spoke the same language. Esau was not speaking no English. They did not speak English. Okay, the most I said these people would come from far, not right next door to us. So, yeah, it just destroyed. Okay, but let me just add another movie. Um, the movie The Mummy. Okay, this goes back to our language. All right, in the movie The Mummy, uh, this uh, the, the mummy was coming against this, this Arab looking guy or whatever, and he was showing all these uh emblems on these or these different pendants, chain pendants, and he pulled out this quote unquote Jewish. Pendant, and then the mummy stopped, and he was like, "That's the language of the slaves." What is stiffness? I'm a man. I am Okay, the language of the slaves. We know that these quote-unquote Jewish people were not slaves. They were not slaves. Even that fake Hitler story. They were not slaves to Hitler, even though that story is not even 100% true. Okay, Hitler didn't even kill all those people. And I showed y'all when you look at the breakdown that I actually did of this movie, the three-hour breakdown, the books that I, I brought out, Hitler even knew who the biblical uh, Jews were, that they were Negroes. Okay, he was saying that. But in this film here, they're showing you that this language that he was speaking Okay, because he was trying different languages to stop the mummy from killing him. This language he was speaking, the, the, the quote-unquote Jewish language, or basically Hebrew language, he was speaking, he said, this, that's the, the language of the slaves. That's our, we the slaves. We were those slaves. And this is why they're showing all these things in this film, because they understand and they know very well who we are. at that speed, so I, I developed a way to temporarily deactivate it. There's vibranium on this train? Now, as she was talking to this uh, European about the vibranium, you saw, uh, or you can see the, the Paleo-Hebrew writing on uh, these, these trains, okay, on the train conductors, just as well as you can see the, the, the Paleo-Hebrew uh, writing on their garments and so forth and so on. Okay, this 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 writing that they're showing you in this film again, connecting back to who we are as a people. Okay, our language. Okay, the writing, the writing, the writing. Okay, they have it all throughout uh, this film. Even in the bright movie, they had showed some Hebrew writing or whatever on the wall there, and I think it said Yeshua or something like that. If I recall, I could check that breakdown out on my page also. Okay, so we have 
we have all these things going on. We got the Hebrew symbols in his mouth. We got the Jewish, um, we got the Jewish tassels. We got, um, we have the Shanti kingdom. We have the garments. We have the language, and we have the writing. Okay, this is this is <laughs> number six. Okay, the writing, the Paleo Hebrew writing. Okay, confirming once again they know these people are the real Hebrew Israelites, the real biblical people of the scriptures. And that's why they had on uh, what they call the Bible, they had written years ago a history of the Negro race, okay? Because they knew who we were. Now, as we see here in the fighting scene between T'Challa and Killmonger, he was pierced. He was pierced. Again, this is a mockery because as I explained in the breakdown that T'Challa, okay, Black Panther, he's playing the one they call Christ. Okay, let's get it in the scriptures. John chapter 19, verse 34. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side. And that's what they're showing you right here in the film. Him getting pierced in the side. And forthwith came there out blood and water. Again, this is mockery, okay? This is number seven, man. This is all mockery, okay? Just like they showed in the movie Book of Eli with him getting shot in his side. Again, shot in his side. All mockery. Again, in the movie War for the Planet of the Apes, the ape Caesar was pierced in his side, his side. Another throwback film you can check out called Brother from Another Planet. Okay, he was stabbed in his side, in his side. Again, all these black actors replaying the biblical story of the one they call Christ being pierced in his side because they know this is our book. They understand that when they call Christ was what you would call black or a Negro today. That's what all the people that don't know truth would call them, basically. Okay, but let's get another scripture. Psalms 22, verse 16. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. Again, connecting to another movie, Dark Tower. Okay, Idris, he was pierced in both his hands. Okay, they pierced the first hand, then they pierced the other hand. Again, mockery, having all our brothers reenact <laughs> these scriptures. Why? They spend trillions of dollars to have us mock these things. Never telling us who we are, only have us playing these roles. Why do that if we are not the biblical people? Also, in the movie uh, Blade, okay, I think it was Blade 2, he was pierced. He was pierced. Again, more mockery, okay? Just like the other movie with the same actor from this movie, Wakabi, in the movie Get Out, Okay, he was pierced in his hand. And like I always say, he never flinched, never cried, never said anything. Okay, it was a symbolic message for us, showing us <laughs> that's who we are. We are the biblical people. Another movie, The uh, Purge 4, the first Purge. Plenty of y'all probably uh, seen that movie already, okay? In that film, he was shot in his side, okay? In his side. Again, back to mocking the scriptures, okay? And then a, a brother that was playing in that film, he was like, yo, you saved us. Again, making fun of us. Making fun and more mockery. Also... In another movie, okay, Avengers, Infinity War, okay, Idris, once again, <laughs> playing the one they call Christ, 
he was pierced in his side and i'm gonna be breaking down that movie too okay so you have all these actors they're being pierced <laughs> they're being pierced because it's all mockery it's all mockery again this is number seven here guys number seven all these things is scripture related but hey So now, in this eighth section, we see uh, Killmonger here. He goes in the closet. He finds this book, okay, that his father left him. And as we see here, the uh, the Hebrew writing, the Paleo-Hebrew writing, okay? This is to remind him of his history, okay? Again, newsflash to us. We need to be reminded of our history, okay? It's not English, okay? It's not the European customs, Christmas, New Year's, Easter, and all these things that we celebrate today like it's ours. We need to be reminded of who we are, but nobody's telling us, yet they're putting it cleverly in these films, okay? Also, you see there's a map here, okay? There's a map here, and there's coordinates, Okay, and we see here this looks just like the kingdom of Judah. If you look at the three hour breakdown that I did of this movie, you will see I bring out <laughs> the kingdom of Judah. Okay, the kingdom of Judah where they were getting the slaves from. They knew these uh, people uh, that they took into captivity were from the kingdom of Judah. Judah, and it's in the scriptures that Judah would go into captivity or slavery, okay? Lamentations chapter 1, verse 3, Judah is going into captivity, slavery, because of affliction, what we're dealing with right now, and because of great servitude, what we're doing right now. She dwelleth among the heathen, the Gentile nations. She findeth no rest. All her persecutors overtook her between the straits and that's where they went to get us from the kingdom of judah as i explained in the breakdown okay they have it on the maps by emmanuel bowen okay called negro land showing this kingdom of judah they also have it in the college textbooks in the book called creole new orleans race and americanization showing about the slaves that came from judah or whiter all these different names they had for it okay but judah is in the scriptures psalms uh, 78 verse 68 but chose the tribe of Judah the Mount Zion which he loved you see that which he loved Psalms 76 verse 1 in Judah in Judah is God known is Elohim known his name is great in Israel okay also connecting to this is uh the movie um get out back to the movie get out they were showing uh wakabi here um how he turned that teddy bear that lion of judah okay representing the tribe of judah also to a back to another film as i explained in the movie called the message they were calling these so-called negroes of uh, the lion of judah okay the lion of judah also as i showed in the movie with eddie murphy coming to america how his father had that lion over his shoulder again representing the lion of the tribe of judah of judah okay Going back to the scriptures, dealing with the one they call Christ. Christ came from the tribe of Judah. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Of Judah. Judah. And he even made a prophecy that his people, okay, Judah, okay, in Israel, they would go into captivity into all nations. Luke chapter 21, verse 24, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive, slave into all nations. So the biblical people, the Jews, the Hebrew Israelites would be led as slaves into all nations. Okay, is that today your European 
a Jewish man? No, he's not. He has not been led into all nations as a slave. It's the so-called Negroes that had their language changed, their heritage and culture changed, that has been led into slavery into all nations and tried, tried to get his memory wiped away. Okay, fulfilling prophecy. And Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles, confirming the Gentiles would be in our land. Like the Mosai said in uh, Genesis chapter 9, 27, he would enlarge Japheth and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. Like the Mosai said, he would make us jealous with those that are not a people. That's Deuteronomy uh, 32 verse 21. Okay, so uh, Jerusalem shall be trotted down, okay, by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Okay, so this have an end time prophecy here. Okay, the Jews, the Hebrews, they would go into captivity into all nations, confirming the scriptures. Okay, confirming the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse twenty-five. The Most High shall cause you to be smitten before your enemies. Okay, again, be uh, fall by the edge of the sword. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth, confirming what the one they call Christ said. They shall be led away captives into all nations, removed into all the kings of the earth. That is your so-called black man today who has been led into slavery all over the earth. But let's get it again one more time. Jeremiah chapter 24 verse 9 and I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth again confirming what Christ said in Luke 24 21 okay into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt see that for us to be hurt to be a reproach to these people because they don't like you you don't look like them okay well, these, these are not our biblical brothers and a proverb look at those nappy headed negroes porch monkeys and this and that okay a taunt hey nigga 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 and this and that a taunt and a curse and that's why we're dealing with these curses written in the scriptures okay in all places whether i shall drive them so again Again, the real Judah, the real Judah is currently in captivity all over the earth to the four corners. All these scriptures are confirming this right here and they're putting it in the films. They know who we are. These Europeans do not fit, fit these biblical prophecies that I just read. So, but somehow everybody believes that these are the biblical people. You should run up on them and ask them what tribe they come from and when did they go into slavery? Huh. Because these people are the ones that actually funded slavery. Look it up. The Jewish actually funded the slave ships. Huh. Look it up. In this ninth section here, okay, in this fighting scene between uh, T'Challa and his general Wakabi, okay, he goes up on a rock and he blows the chauffeur horn, okay, why is he doing that, why is he doing that, we know that the quote unquote Jewish people, they have their chauffeur horns, okay, again, symbolic message to our customs the things that we are supposed to do why are they doing that why are they showing that this is number nine okay this is number nine all these things are adding up what's going on what's going on y'all see right here is this a coincidence is this just by chance no Let's get it in the scriptures, Ezekiel 33, verse 3. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. And that's what Wakabi did, okay, in the film. Again, again, Hebrew Israelite customs here, y'all. Customs, come on. 
And another thing I noticed, but I didn't speak on it when I broke down the movie, was I noticed that Wakabi, the way he was dressed also, and they, they tried to cover him up, or they tried to cover this up a lot. But if you look at his right arm, he has what it looks like to be like a bull whip going over his shoulder. I'm not sure if you guys <laughs> uh, saw that or peeped that. The way they had him dressed in here was very symbolic as well. Okay? It looks like a bull whip going over his shoulder. Okay? And we know that the so-called Negroes were whipped with this bull whip in slavery. Okay? The symbolic message is that they know these people that they did this to were in fact the Hebrew Israelites with all these customs. That's what they're showing you. Also, he had what appeared to be a rope around his neck or something that looked like a rope going around his neck. So he had the bull whip on his shoulder and then he had what appeared to be something going around his neck like a rope or like a noose going around his neck again denoting that they know the people that they hanged with ropes around their neck from trees were in fact the hebrew israelites okay and that's what this wardrobe was showing me besides the he the paleo hebrew writing on this garment and all of that and if him wearing the blue it also showed me this too and i was like wow Wow, but let's get into some scriptures, Acts chapter 5, verse 30, okay? The Elohim of our fathers raised up Yahushua, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. He was hanged on a tree, okay? And it's the same thing that happened uh, to us, okay? Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. What? Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Again, that was us hanging on those trees. We are cursed fulfilling the biblical prophecies because we are the biblical people. That's why they had written on the book, History of the Negro Race. They understood who we were, but they didn't want to tell us. That's why they had to change your name, change your customs. That was the whole point of breaking you. That was the purpose. So you won't come back to who you are biblically. Okay? So again, this just connects with what I'm saying and what uh, we see displayed here in his wardrobe. Okay? All connected, man. All connected. But again, this is number nine. Hey, yo. This yours? Who are you? So, section 10, the last section, okay, he asked him, who is he, okay? And as I showed y'all, <laughs> T'Challa, he's playing the one they call Christ, the one they call Christ. Now, here you see him with the all black on, and you see he has a trench coat on going all the way down to his foot, Okay, this trench coat, this long trench coat, okay? Just like in the movie Blade, the Blade movies, okay? What did Wesley Snipes have on? He had on the long garment down to his foot, okay? <laughs> Just like in the movie uh, Dark Tower, Idris, he had on a long garment down to his foot. And you can watch that breakdown I have on my page also. Again, these brothers were playing uh, the one they call Christ. Let's get it here. Revelation chapter 1 verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot. Down to the foot. Foot. And that's why they keep showing us with these long trench coats on, okay, symbolizing the Hebrew Israelites wearing their garments going down to their foot because they knew that's how we dressed and that's what they were basically showing you throughout this movie, 
okay? Because they know this was part of our customs. They know we don't know this thing. But they know and understand this. And girth about the paps with a golden gir- a golden girdle, okay? Garment down to the foot. They understand this, man. So, we have <laughs> 10 items, Okay, 10 items, all right? We showed you the Hebrew symbols in his mouth, okay? We showed you the fringes on. We showed you they mentioned the Ashanti kingdom. And if you want further info on that, just look at the three-hour the three hour breakdown that I did on the movie, okay? We showed you the, the, the border of blue, okay? We showed you the language, okay? Uh, the the Paleo Hebrew writing, okay, the piercing of the one they call Christ, okay, the map of of Judah, the kingdom of Judah, okay, the blowing of the of the horn, the shofar horn, the trumpet, basically, okay, and now we have this garment down to the foot, okay. Is this all a coincidence, y'all? Is it? Mm. I don't think so. And if they spending millions of dollars, because in this movie, this movie did uh, 1.1 billion already worldwide. 1.1 billion dollars, okay? <laughs> and it ain't going to no black communities to take care of us, okay? So they showing you with all these ten things. This is your case, right here. And these are things that, and there's a lot more. In this, but you can watch the three-hour breakdown. But I just wanted to show you these ten things to confirm they know who we are. Okay? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. So, that's what it is. That's what it is. Now, I want to get into some research that they did or some information or some testimonies from their peoples to confirm they know those whom they call quote unquote Africans, okay, these are the Hebrew Israelites, even their DNA, okay, they understand that they know this truth. Alright? So let's get into a little bit of that. To the casual observer, they look and live much like any other traditional Southern African community. But if you scratch below the surface, there are some intriguing differences. Here I am in South Africa, and there are these men wearing skull caps and tali shoulder wraps. You would see this in any synagogue in America or Israel, but I never thought I'd see it here in South Africa. I want to find out how these people seem to have Jewish customs. Samuel Moeti is president of the Lemba Cultural Association. Pleasure. So, I'll be honest, I, I came into this village and the first word I heard was shalom, yes. a Hebrew word. Yes. For 10 years in the church and the Rev is preaching, I'm Jewish. Well, shalom and, well, shalom and lachayim on this shit. Yes. A Hebrew word. Yes. How is that possible? How is it that the, the Lemba is speaking Hebrew? The Lembas are the original Hebrews and they were scattered, as you know. And they cross into Africa. So they were scattered all over. So in South Africa, in many parts of South Africa, you find the Lembas who are actually Hebrews. Hebrews. So the Lembas claim to be descendants of ancient Israelites? Not claim. They are. They are. They are. Okay. We are the original African Hebrew. We are scattered all over. I've asked historian Dr. Magda LaRue to come with me to the site. She's been studying the Lemba for years and has just published a book on the similarities between their social customs and those of the Old Testament Israelites. So, Magda, there are specific parallels between the, the religious practices of the Lemba today and the religious practices of ancient Israelites. Definitely. They've got remnants of an ancient type of Israelite religion. So, in a way, wow. they conserve this very special yeah. ancient type of religion. It's like old religion. school religion. Yes. But how do they maintain that religious, that religious identity? How did they keep it intact for so many years when there was this long journey from Israel down to South Africa? You see, that's, that's, the, the, that's a question. I think it's by means of the, the oral traditions. 
but they kept themselves separate from other groups. They lived with other peoples, moving with them, migrated southwards. Oh, that is one of their salient characteristics, that they, is that they keep up their culture. They just live it. Mm -hmm. Dr. Trevor um, Jenkins has been the lead geneticist in the study of the Lemba for the last 20 years. And I didn't really have much interest in pursuing their actual identity until a friend who had been studying the Lemba had detected some Jewish influences in the music of the Lemba. So their, their music actually differs from the people around them. And that brought you in to study the genetics? Yes. The genet yes, this is the very interesting thing, that the South African lemba harbor a particular Y chromosome pattern or lineage that's common in people who identify as the Kohanim or the Jewish priests. Okay. In the Jewish tradition, the Kohanim are part of the priestly caste. Amazingly, scientists have isolated a strand of DNA that's strongly associated with the Kohanim. It's called the Kohen modal haplotype, and it's almost exclusive to Jews who claim the priestly heritage. Almost exclusive. The Kohen modal haplotype has been found among the priestly caste of the Lemba. The observation that the Kohen pattern was commonest in that one particular group is something that, that begs exploration. This link supports the Lemba's oral history and the archaeological clues we've seen in the places they say they lived. From our data, I would put my money on saying it's the Middle East. Himmler is convinced that Lemba ancestors did indeed come from the Middle East. I'm excited to get back to the Lemba to see what they make of this. And I've got the perfect opportunity. It's the Lemba's annual festival, and I've been invited. It's hard to believe that these people, who to the casual observer look just like the other African communities they live among, actually do have DNA passed down from Middle Eastern forefathers. This proves that when it comes to race, looks really can be deceiving. This annual festival is a chance for the oral history and traditional songs of the Lemba to be passed on to the next generation. This song tells the story of the Lemba's journey all the way from Israel to South Africa. Having traced this journey, I'm eager to hear what Samuel Moetti thinks about the DNA evidence. So the genetic testing actually proved to the doubters what you and your forefathers have been saying for generations. That must be exciting news. It is. I'll be honest, I hadn't heard of the Lemba. I knew very little about the people. But having spent time making the journey from Jerusalem down through Zimbabwe, having spent time here at this festival, seeing what your people are all about, I can only sum it up in one word, and that's shalom. Shalom. We've seen how science has backed up the claims of the Lemba in the face of years of doubt and prejudice. The archaeological clues, the DNA evidence, and the Lemba's own oral history add up to a very convincing argument. One of the most challenging aspects to doing this journey and seeing what it was like for the Lemba to go from the northern parts of Israel down into South Africa is that there's very little archaeological evidence on the ground that says definitively, this is what the Lemba did. So this is why I think the genetic component is so compelling because it's hard to fake the DNA, it's in your blood. It reminds me that first impressions can often be misleading. It was hard to believe that a tribe of black Africans could be the descendants of ancient Israelites. But that's exactly what they appear to be. Brother and sisters, they are there. We are not lost. We are scattered. We are original Hebrew. I'd like to now bring up another interesting place that you're finding descendants of the Israelites, but may not necessarily be from the Ten Tribes, but will also play a role. And it shouldn't be overlooked. It's a very serious scenario. It's, it's in Africa. Africa has perhaps hundreds of millions of people with this identity right now of being from the people of Israel. Does that mean they were from the Ten Tribes? Likely not. We were taught by the historians and within our own traditions that when the Romans conquered Judea a few hundred years after that the tribes of Israel went into exile, 
perhaps millions of Judeans were sold into slavery, into Africa, into Rome, deep into Africa. And if you look now, you're seeing people who are most likely the descendants of those slaves who kept true. I like to bring up a few specific examples because they're going to be game changers. One of them wrote letters to Israel when it became a state. And they said, we're, uh, we're Israelites out in Africa. You know, everyone laughed at them and they said, African Israelites, these people are just trying to jump on the first world country bandwagon. They're living in a third world country, they got nothing. We're coming to Israel, we got innovation, technology. So they're trying to get on this train because there's such a thing called the right of return. All descendants of the Jewish people from around the world are able to move to Israel. So they, they said, we are also. And everyone kind of laughed at them, like I said. And a few people took it serious and went out there and started studying them, learned about their culture. And a professor from Duke University went out there and did DNA testing on them. And he showed not only did they share Semitic genes from people who were in Yemen and back to the Middle East, these gentlemen, a large percent of them, have the Y chromosome to be Kohanim, to be priests. Now, if anyone who doesn't know, a priest is a specific family clan of the nation of Israel who come from Aaron, the brother of Moses, who was the first priest. And anyone descended from Aaron is, has the, the, the status title priest. And we found that these men in this village in South Africa called Lemba, L-E-M-B-A, carry this genetic marker to let us know that they share the same as from the Sephardic and the Ashkenaz and and the population of the people in Israel today, they share the same exact DNA marker. That's mind-blowing. So everyone kind of got humbled a little bit, who, who laughed at them and said, now, now, now what? Now what do we do about this? This could have tremendous implications. Another area in Africa you have uh, something big happening is in Nigeria. You have the Igbo people, or Igbo, pronounced either way. There's 40 million of them, also Christians, like I spoke about before, how that could happen to the children of Israel very easily. But also a lot of them are now coming out and converting back or adopting the, the rules of the Torah without all the paganism that they've been practicing for hundreds of years. There's been books written about it from scholars in Nigeria, from scholars from the Jewish people. And where it gets interesting is, in America there was a slave trade. And a lot of the slaves, a very high percentage of them, came from Western Nigerian ports. And in America today, you see a, a very large movement of African Americans who say that they're the real chosen people, that they're the children of Israel, they're the Judeans. You know, so what, are they just trying to create a, an identity for themselves because they were slaves, or is there really something here? And the answer is, most likely there is something there. And most likely... Maybe that they were the original Israelites, and maybe that the Jewish people today who are white Caucasian people um, came in a little bit later on. We know that some of the greatest sages of the transmission of the Torah were converts from Rome. You have a man named Uncleus who, who wrote a commentary on the Torah, unprecedented, that we still learn today. He was a convert. Some of the largest pillars on the transmission today were Roman converts. So here we are, we're, you know, I'm speaking, we're ca Caucasian Jewish people, and now you have people in Africa saying that they're the real people of Israel. It can't be ruled out at all. We know they were sold into slavery. We know now that they're fulfilling prophecies by saying, we're coming back. Again, you see these people, they do their research. Okay, this is just one thing I'm bringing out here. They do their research. They know who we are without a shadow of a doubt. Okay, without a shadow of a doubt. So I encourage those who, who watch this for the first time, those who might find this interesting, do your research, guys. Check out my videos. Okay, I have, I have a video on all the books that I use. Okay, all the college texts, the illustrated maps, all these things. You can check out, I'll leave a, a, a description or links in, in, in the description of this video so y'all can check it out. 
and do the research and get into this truth here because it's coming out. It's coming out. It's no longer a secret. Like Mashiach said, okay? It's nothing secret that shall not be known and come abroad. All this stuff is going to come out. All this stuff is going to come out. So it's time for us to awaken and learn this truth. So I encourage everybody, all right, that's into this, that find this interesting, that's just learning this for the first time, seek it out, come back to the Most High God, okay? That's what we need to do, all right? So on that note, I'm going to say peace and shalom.